G'day football fans and welcome back to episode 15 of Brentford 2 Big Time. Today, we're just heading away to the Camp Nou of all places, like just us, little old Brentford, just little old us, little Brentford, heading away to the Camp Nou. It's, it's been a ride, I'll, I'll say that. Um, I think last video maybe was the most upset I've ever been. Um, and then after the, I had published the video when I realised that I had been stupid and not cut the video off sooner and it there's just like four minutes of silence it's not good it's poor form we've performed better than that perhaps since you were last here maybe anyway let's get into it make sure you do leave us that like down below subscribe if you're new around here comment what you think of the video and maybe one day i'll stop rambling in these intros and um learn how to speak properly that'd be nice i reckon so not a whole real lot to to tell you in terms of, I mean, good things that have happened with the squad or performances, things like that. Uh, bad news though, um, Albin Lafont has a bid from Juventus of 42 million, which doesn't seem right. Uh, if I click that, I think that's incorrect. How do I go to the offer? Uh, yeah, they offered this uh, to, I said no to that, um, but he's not interested. He's not interested in uh, Juventus, which is very good. Um, Ethan Pinnock will be leaving at the end of the season. We already knew that. His contract's running out. Um, so is uh, Jensen and Norgard. That's fine. They're uh, 30 and above. Uh, and they're not taking the club anywhere. If it was like Messi came to us at 31 and wanted to join Brentford, we'd consider extending that contract. You know, it's Christian Norgard and Matthijs Jensen with all due respect it's not there's no respect there. so they'll be leaving uh, we'll be having to replace them in the new year so i imagine the summer transfer window at the end of the season probably going to be better i don't know why i said better i meant bigger there's going more is going to happen basically um as for what's happening right now though it's it's still going it's still happening we're still if we look at the stats um how do we go competition let's just look at I know there's a data hut, I get that. But if we go to the detailed stats, here we go, here we go. So, uh, if we look at attacking stats, where, Jesus, this moves annoyingly. Goals, we've scored 35. What's our XG? Where's just XG? 38. So we've scored 35 goals from 38 XG. We have the fifth best XG in the league. Equal seventh goals so we're underperforming xg um not doing a great job of it if we then go down to goals against um second last um we conceded 44 in 23 games from if you go to the xg the 12th worst xg against so we are like 28 is our xg against and we've conceded 44 so we're this is the part that I was losing my mind at in the last video. We are massively like underperforming in both regards. So we aren't scoring as much as we should and we're conceding more than we should. So it, I'm losing my goddamn mind. But look, it's an evolution thing. If we go to the tactics, I'm, I'm still tweaking things um, to try and find the balance right because I find that I've changed it to both advanced playmakers here. Um, so that because it was a Mazala on the right hand side because he has the Mazala has the freedom to roam you know in and out and wherever he wants to go basically the Mazala whether it was Kamada or uh, Eklund Camp whoever was ending up way too close to here so he was you know flying out to the right like this a lot um so when you looked at the past map in general there was just this huge hole in the middle here because these two we're having a little party over here and just I just think look it's only been like one or two games since I've changed to this um, we've won both of those games one of them was against Northampton but we've won both of those games um, the other thing that I've changed and I feel stupid basically because I had these on overlap left and overlap right why is that dumb I'm playing with inverted wingers that I want to sit I want them to just sit here and sort of create like a five at the back sort of hub to let these five players then go and, and create things. Yes, these players can drift forward and, and help out here and there, and they still do, but I've changed them to, they're on defend, they don't overlap, 
uh, hopefully that means that we are, you know, getting a bit better at it, I guess. Can we attempt... Um, don't know if we can look at the just the... I just want to look at the pass map. Give me two seconds. I guess our most recent pass map against um, Southampton will have to do, because apparently I can't look at the general seasons one. I can only look at our, our last match. Um, but as you see, look, it's starting to build like a good sort of round sort of map, I guess. Um, as I said, what I have really looked at changing is that this, uh, instead of being a... Um, Mazala, so he was looking at being, you know, closer up to the halfway line or closer even than to the winger. He's he's dropping about bit back a bit, but obviously that was, you know, a fairly even match. So we were back and forward a lot, and you know, obviously, we'd be higher up the pitch if we had the pass map from Northampton. We'd have that. Um, let me get out of this. Um, what has happened since you were last here, though, is plenty really. Um, the last game you were here for, of course, was Real Madrid. Yeah. So lots has happened. Um, Versus Liverpool twice back to back. Um, we got knocked out of the cup. Plenty has happened, basically. First match after you uh, were last here, we had just a, a crazy ending to a match here against Southampton. They took the lead the 22nd minute. We equalised in the 81st. 93rd minute penalty from Ennis Unal. Is that how you say that? Unal? I don't remember. I just remember he signed for Manchester City and then they came to Australia and then I saw him play that game. I think Yaya Toure scored the only goal. It was like against Man Melbourne City on the goal. Anyway, um, let's see if that was the same old story as what every... Uh, no. Which I'm I'm very happy to see that they have outperformed us, but we've, you know, that's against the trend. Um, unlike our loss, our, our loss to Luton. We got knocked out of the Carabao Cup by Luton. Um, I don't want to talk about it. Got knocked out by Luton. Then, days later. Literally, three days later. So, 28th of October, 1st of November. Beat Manchester City 1-0. We then beat just Ajax 5-0 at, at Ajax. Simples, easy, yeah, casual. Is what it is. Just in a day's work, all that. Uh, and Buemo with a goal. Two for Tony, Camera and Elise with the others. We then get a one-all draw against... Watford, and what was the story with this one? Yep, you guessed it. Look at that. This is exactly what I'm talking about with the um, outperforming, no, underperforming our XG, but what? I'm so confused. I can't use words. Um, it's later at night than it should be. Um, what? I'm recording later than I should be. That's what I mean. 3.28 there. Uh, look, I'm, in, I'm furious, basically. Um, we then beat Wolves, finally beat Wolves. I think that's the first time we've beaten them in this career mode. Um, of course, Evan Ferguson got his customary goal against us, but we did end up 3-2 winners. Adam Webster making it look even nicer with the 91st minute. Uh, Cancellation, we then beat Olympiakos 3-1. Uh, Jürgen Ecklenkamp getting the scoring underway. He has been very, very good this season. I've been pretty happy with that purchase. I mean, as a... Like, what did he come in for? It was 20-odd? 20, 20 uh... No, only 17 million we paid for him, and he's now worth 38 to, 8, to 48 million. And he's averaging, uh, you can't really see, but uh, all up, he's averaging a 7.09. Champions League, he's only averaging a 6.9. You can just about see that. Um, Premier League, in 16 appearances, he's averaging a 7.14. So he's performing pretty well. I've now got him playing as the um, uh, advanced playmaker, of course, and let's see how he goes, I guess. Um, Next match uh, was not good. Um, so 5-1 away at Everton. Uh, if we look at the stats, I don't think we deserved it from memory. Um, yeah, they had seven shots on target and they scored five. This is one of those games where, again, we underperformed with our XG. They well outshone. Outshone it? I don't know how to... You know what I mean, but I just can't say the words. Um, Tottenham won all. Happy with that. Tottenham won all draw. Easy. Um, then blue uh, lead, blew a lead. We blew a lead uh, against Crystal Palace. It was one 0 thanks to Ivan Tony. Yuki Anderson equalised, and Buemo gave us her lead back. And then through Hughes and Sekumara, we blew that one. We then also lost uh, against Shakhtar. It is what it is. I'm gonna guess it was the same story, but Ben Godfrey had a shocker. I don't want to talk about it. One nil. We beat Manchester United. So we beat Manchester City and Manchester United since you were last here. 
Easy. Just simples. I mean, it's just what we do, mate. We're that kind of club. We then beat Aston Villa 5-1. Pumped five past the team. Absolutely amazing. In the Premier League, 5-1 win. Uh, Diego Carlos' own goal got it underway. Then Tony and Dan's got just before half time. They get one back. We get two right at the end. I think this was the opposite, where we very much outperformed their XG. Five shots on target, five goals. Perfect. Why can't can we just do that over and over again? No, we can't. We can lose two under Liverpool. They had a man sent off, and then we equalised very shortly after. Uh, and then we didn't do anything in the second half, and they scored. So I don't really love that. We then had them. That's our two Premier League fixtures, three days apart. Who did this scheduling? What absolute pill did this scheduling and decided, yeah, you can just have your two Liverpool fixtures back to back. Anyway, they won 3-0. They won 3-0. We were away at Anfield and they won 3-0. It is what it is. Um, Fulham we beat 1-0. Thanks to Ivan Tony, who then got sent off. So I think he got sent off earlier in the season as well. Maybe it was this Arsenal game? Yep, there you go. So he scored a penalty, got sent off. Then where was it? Fulham scored a penalty, got sent off. Don't know what it is. Don't know what it is, man. Um, just do not know. Then against uh, <laughs> West Ham... Two goals from Thomas Suchek. And then we almost came back but didn't quite get there. Then Northampton had two red cards and we pumped them 5-0. This was the first match that I started with the um, advanced playmaker. It's against Northampton so I'm not going to count a whole lot. You know, not looking at it with a whole lot of weight I guess. But Mbwemo getting a hat trick is pretty nice. Um, and he was playing as the out and out striker because of the suspension for Ivan. Tony. So I got a hat trick, uh, including a penalty right at the end, Ben Godfrey getting on as well. And then most recently, Danielle Marlin broke his 10 game scoreless run. Uh, I don't know what it is about the first half of the season and Danielle Marlin, but he just cannot do it. Three goals, five assists is pretty decent though for half a season. I mean, a lot of bench appearances uh, maybe should be scoring a couple more, but that's pretty good. Three goals, five assists, I'll take that. Um, and that brings us to today's game. Look, it's it's going to be what it's going to be. If we look at our goal scorers, of course, it's Ivan Tony out, and out, uh, out, well out in front. Um, he's got 16 goals, then seven for Mbwemo and Eklund Camp, five for Damsgaard. You know, we've got some contributions coming from uh, a few places. Seven assists for Kamada and Elise, five for Shirky and Marlon. I would love to see Shirky get a goal. He's worth a lot of money. He's worth, see here, worth almost 80 million pounds, but he's just, I don't know. It's just not quite happening for him. I'm just not too keen, not too fond of it. I don't know. Like you can see uh, down here in the appearances that he's making, a lot, like just about half of them, if not just about half of them. It literally says right there. Half of them are off the bench. Um, just because I'm not super convinced and I think really it's this it's the work rate is be, being an 8 that I don't love. But hey, he's 22 years old and uh, you know let's hope that he can um, continue to grow and hopefully perform for us and score some more goals because that would be sensational um what else what else what else if we look at the competitions as for the premier league we are as you see here sitting in 10th that's pretty good honestly with um if you if we head to our home page if you look at our league positions we got as low as 14th there that's as low as we got and and that may have been around when you were last here we're now up in 10th thanks to that win over southampton everything's looking good um brighton are now being coached by Xavi. Um, speaking of uh, coaches, I'm not sure if it'll be here. Give me two seconds. So I don't have the uh, item in my inbox anymore, but uh, before hiring Marcus Weinzerl, Bruce Monchen Gladbach did approach me for an interview. They sacked someone, uh, if we look at, where is it, managers, here we go. They sacked uh, Petkovic in December. They offered me an interview. I declined the interview because, I mean, looking at their squad, like, I know it says that I'm after Lucas, Luca Nets, um, but I've just got him, like, shortlisted so that I know what happens. Like, if something happens and he wants to leave the club and this fee here comes down, I'll, I'll probably be looking at him as a left-back option. Um, <laughs> but looking at the squad, I just wasn't too interested, to be honest. Um, I mean, the, the interesting parts to me are Luca Nets and Manu Kone. They do have down here... Um, Benjamin Ses Ses Sesco? I don't know how to say it. Sesco, the you know, football manager god, basically. Um, but, I mean, I just I just wasn't that interested. Um, and I don't feel like 
because they are seventh. And if you look at their schedule, are they in any Europe? They are in. They're in the league phase. They're actually doing much better than we are. Um, as we go 18th against 19th today, um, I, I just thought it was too much of a sideways step rather than a step up. So like if. I don't know, like a Inter Milan or a Bayern or a Napoli or, you know, one of these top sort of sides came to us for an interview. I'd probably take the interview at least, um, but I didn't, I just wasn't vibing with Mönchengladbach. It wasn't for me. Um, someone here I wanted to look at, uh, oh, Bill Bale, because Antonio Conte is their coach. That's the first thing. That's the first thing to notice. Second thing to notice, they're on top of the league. They are winning their league. That is... Uh, he's doing a sensational job. It, although, he's, I think he's doing a sensa sensational job. But he only took over recently. Um, like... So they... So they sacked... No, they didn't sack Deschamps. He got... He moved to... Oh, it's all making sense now. He's at Tottenham. So many changes have happened. Man, this is a weird, weird world. Um... Uh, like, as you can see here with Sarri being the coach of Barcelona, today's opponent. Um, let's get to it. Let's have a look at our lineup. All right, so this is the lineup we're going to go with. And look, it's just about as strong as we can pick, really. Um, uh, or as strong as we have, even. Um, I mean, I accept that Jensen won't be on there because he's injured. He can drop out of that subs bench. Um, <laughs> so the lineup itself, it will be Lafont in goals with Ndika and Godfrey as centre backs ahead of him. The right back is Nico. The left back is Rico, of course. The half back will be Janelt ahead of him, Kamada and Eklund Camp with Elise and Dantgaard on the wings and Tony up front. It's as good as we can get, really. If I scroll down here, there's a few players unavailable. Aya is suspended for the next match. He too many yellow cards. Too many other cards in the group stage. Um, if we head back, Jensen injured, Balogun unregistered, of course. Um, let's see how we go, basically. I mean, hopefully it's more of a contest than um, the Real Madrid one, which was over, I mean, probably before it started is the, the accurate way of saying that. Um, if we look at their squad, I mean, yeah, he's there. Lucas Hernandez, that's probably a good buy. No idea who that is. Uh, other than that, same people down here. Kyle Walker, Matteo Lovato, Pablo Maffio. Subs bench a bit more wild than the uh, starting lineup, apart from whoever Ferdy Cadioglu is. Can I click him? Why can't I click his? I can't click him. Sorry. Football manager said no. I would have loved to. I, don't take it on me. I would have loved to. Um. But football manager didn't let us. Let's just see how we go. We're at the camp new. Let's go out there and goddamn experience it and enjoy it. And hopefully do something. I mean, it's the Spotify camp new. It's it's got so much history and, and excitement and and tension. There's not tension really. Um, uh, the only tension would be if we start if we walked out in Real Madrid kits. I don't know, something like that. Um, anyway. Uh, we're looking pretty good in the group stage, really. I mean, we're looking good to make that um, the knockout round before the round of 16, whatever. The, I can't remember what it's called, the first knockout stage or whatever. I don't know. We're looking good for it, though. I mean, we're in 18th, so I'll take that for now. Our remaining fixes are obviously Barcelona, and then uh, we've got Roma next, who, um, if you uh, remember, after our first full season in charge where we finished, like, uh, 11th or whatever it was, um, Roma actually approached us and Roma wanted to hire Mr. Toller, Spike Toller, um, to take over. So maybe we should have done. I don't know. Here's the first highlight though. Rico Henry in towards the box, looking back, finds Kamada. Ooh, what's happening? Kamada to Elise. It's in. Elise has scored. I do not know what's happening. Uh, the, the game is freaking out, but we have taken the lead and maybe that's why it's freaking out. I would be too. Henry nearly loses it. Gavi gets it. Oh, gets it past Gavi into Kamada and then Elise with just a looping header over to Sagan, who was in a bit of no man's land. He was, you know, stuck in that do I go, do I stay sort of position, but I, I don't mind. Thank you. Th thank you, basically. We've, we've taken the lead. But sensational. If we could move up to 11th and just be just in behind Real Madrid, that'd be sensational. I would absolutely froth that. Um, I'm still, you know, touch and go with whether I stick with Brentford after this season. I think I do have a contract for another, might be another 
one more season or two more seasons. What well, either one or two more seasons. I can't remember the the exact year, but um, yeah, we'll see. I know it doesn't expire this season, but um, we, we might, you know, at the end of the season, take a look at who gets sacked and who's likely to get sacked and all that sort of stuff, and maybe we move on. We'll see. Um, let me know what you think, of course, because um, I mean. You're a viewer, but you, I want you to be a part of this as well. I mean, that's the that's the whole point of the YouTubes, you know? We, we'll start a community. We'll start a, a, a back and forth where, yes, it's it's just me sat alone in a room with a bluey poster behind me over here. Um, but uh, you can be a part of it too. Just comment. Just talk to me. Let's have a chat. Um, meanwhile, this uh, first half has gone on pretty uneventfully, which is pretty sensational. Unlike this Galatasaray PSG game, which is 5-1, here's a highlight, I shouldn't have said that, right before half-time. Yaniel, you absolute melon. Are you serious? Hasn't, definitely hasn't done that all season. No player has done that all season. Every time I record a video, something stupid happens. A red card, we get effed up. I didn't want to swear. Um... Uh, this time, it's Yanelt, who's been sensational, like last season sensational, average rating of like 7.1 something. This season, one of our best midfielders. Yeah, let's go out and do it, lads. Um, Yanelt, I'm so annoyed, man, because Yanelt has been so good. Uh, let's hit it with a fire up. We're in this, man. We, we could be in this. Obviously, we don't have possession because it's Barcelona. They're the kings of having possession, right? Um, and we're looking fairly deep if you look at our uh, pass map here. So we would like to get a bit further up. A sixth damn goal. Stop it. Relax. You've won it. It's fine, Lucas. Don't score more. We might need to change to maybe, I don't know, play a bit longer passes or something just so we can try to get up the pitch a bit. Because um, they're definitely dominating now. As you see, the XG's going up for Barcelona. Um, yeah, it says hit early, crosses and float them. I will do that. I'll hit them with encourage and let's, yeah, let's start to overlap and, and play a bit longer. Yeah, why not? Uh, distribute the flanks just so we can get, we need to get up the pitch a bit basically because um, this is not going to work and Yanelt's going to do the same thing again. Or they're going to give away a free kick just outside the box. And we've conceded a number of these this season. Uh, don't really want to talk about it. Here's Lewandowski. I think he hit the bar? I couldn't really tell what happened there, I've got to be honest. I think my eyes are going. But, I mean, it's a throw-in. That's good news. We didn't concede, so that's cool. Definitely Barcelona's half this one. Um, hoping that we can get up the pitch at some point. Um, let's hit him with a pause. Let's see what subs we can make. I know we've got tired players, basically. So we can take Eklund Camp off. Yeah, let's bring on Norgard, um, and then... And Boyamo can come on for Michael Elise. I've changed the like pop filter thing so it's facing the other way now, so that I don't smack it. But that means that I have to like look around it to see things, and it's doing my head in. And I need to sort it out, man. It's. I thought I would give it a go for this episode, and look, I have. I can move my hands, and I don't smack it, but can't see my play ratings and stuff. Um, anyway, 70 minutes in. Look, one all is pretty good. We will make that sub there. Bring on the, uh, young boy. I hit, I'm sure I hit do it, and it hasn't done it. All right, then. Um, now it says it has done it. What are you doing? I don't understand, man. Um, so did it do it? I, or maybe it's just thinking about it still. Um, we can only really... The only other real change we have... Is a defensive one or Daniel Marlin, which isn't ideal, uh, really. Um, let's do Sorensen for Janelt, and then we'll move Ben Godfrey forward. That works for me. And we'll see how we get on. Did that just say substitute 255? It still has Dame's card on there. What's happening? Yes, substitute him off. This game's so dumb sometimes. Like, I hit, just do it. I hit the button that they were saying, click here for this exact thing to happen, and it just reused. 6 nil for Bayern Munich as well. Where we are really watching the wrong game, aren't we? But, I mean, uh, at this point, we're holding on to a 
point at the camp now. I don't want to. It's not going to happen. I'm like, now that I've said it, it's going to go again. They're going to score, you know. But I mean, we're, we're so deep. Look at this. Oh no, here it comes. It's the 90th minute. Eric Garcia here across to Lucas Hernandez, which is a good purchase. I do like that. Uh, Pedri bringing it forward. Good win from Ruslev. And Buemo for Tony. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Kamada. Kamada! Get in! Get in! Get in! He's, he, he's dinked the keeper. All right, all right, all right. Let's go to positive. Let's stop playing out of defense. Let's stop overlapping. No need to do that. Completely direct. Oh my god, we're winning at the Camp Nou. Oh my days. Um, <laughs> that is ridiculous. Slow it down. Let's be absolute a-holes. No need to prevent the bloody kick. Oh my god, we're winning at the Camp Nou. This is sensational. I've immediately gone completely... I've lost my mind, but a good ball from Mbomo to Tony. They've just left us completely free at there at the at the back. Really, I don't know how we had so many players so far forward, um, or why they didn't have anyone back. I guess is probably a more reasonable question. But with just minutes to go, we're winning at Camp Nou. Two minutes to go. Oh, stop it! Just not a goal. Just not a goal. I don't care what happens. Just not a goal. Not a goal. Uh, Someone can get sent off. I don't care. Just not a goal. Kunde's in behind. They're into the box. Godfrey, good tackle. Looked like a good tackle to me. Kunde to Gavi. Yes, Lafont. What a save, Lafont. That is huge. Oh, and another one. Stop that. That's ridiculous. You are being ridiculous. Crossed to the back post. Headed away by Sorensen. Pedri gets it back. Norgard tackles him. Into Frank Kessie. Kessie. Come on. Time's like almost up, man. Gavi, intercepted by Ruslev, yes Ruslev, gives it to Mbomo, oh, looks for Tony, can't find him, over the top from Lucas Hernandez, intercepted by Sorensen, out for a throw in, oh my god, this is insane, can you imagine Brentford going and winning at the camp, no, my goodness, thrown in, Ruslev wins it, Mbomo now, boots it long, goes out for a throw in, come on referee, We've won at the Camp Nou. That is ins I did not go into this thinking that we would win a game. You know, I went into that going, like Real Madrid, let's not concede seven. That'll be a good result. We've won. We've won. That is... Get in there. Get in. So, a um, historic, like, monumental result. Like, a win away at the Camp Nou. Like, I remember when I was growing up and um, uh, there was this goal where... I think it was Thierry Henry scored away at the Bernabeu, and Clive Tilsley being the manager, uh, the manager, the commentator, um, and his commentary being like, they've scored, they've scored at the Bernabeu, like it's that big of a deal to beat one of these sides, and little old Brentford have gone and done it. Brentford with a stadium capacity of 17,000 have beaten Barcelona at the game. That's sensational, also sensational if we go to the inbox. Brentford have secured a playoff spot, so we will be playing knockout Champions League football. I don't know who we're going to get. It's probably going to be one of these other sides that will knock us out. Uh, probably. I don't know. But we're there. We're, our hat is in the ring to maybe do something. I don't know. We're not going to win, obviously. I'm not getting that far ahead. I understand. But man, that's sensational, isn't it? That is so good. I'm so happy with that. If we look at competitions, look. We've secured a playoff spot, and we might end up against... I mean, if we look here, like, if we could end up against, like, a Porto or a Marseille somehow. I mean, obviously, I understand that they're higher than us in this table, but if we could end up against one of them or a, or a Gladbach, Besiktas, Besiktas even, or Bilbao, I don't know. <sighs> Amazing. Amazing. Anyway, <laughs> that'll wrap up today's video. I'm lost for words, man. Why do we have to play Luton again? The team that knocked us Luton again. Anyway. That'll wrap up today's video, video, guys. Make sure you do leave us that like down below. Subscribe if you're new around here. Comment what you thought of the video, uh, about how we can improve the series, where we should go from here. Should I leave at the end of the season? Wh whatever you reckon. Let me know. And until next time, when we go again, probably on another giant killing adventure. Peace. Peace.